welcome one, welcome all. This is episode three of How a Motorcycle Works. If you didn't catch them, go back and watch episodes one and two. This episode will cover the engine, starter, and other components. Sit back, grab yourself some stickers with the links in the description box, and prepare to learn some interesting things you can impress your buds with. Engines are wonderful machines. People have been in love with the powerful lumps of metal since French engineer J.J. Etienne Lenore, or however the crap you say his name, created the first functioning prototype in 1859. Let's not kid ourselves. It is because they have explosions, are loud, and make things go fast. Eventually, someone decided to strap one between their legs, put a few gallons of highly flammable liquid on top, and ride it around. This, of course, is the motorcycle. Motorcycle engines come in a plethora of different configurations. Single cylinder, parallel twin, V-twin, inline three, inline four, V-4, boxer, and many more. Each of these engines have different characteristics and are used for different purposes, but they all function in the same general way. First, fuel is taken from the fuel tank and simultaneously, air is sucked in through a filter towards the intake. The suction bringing the air in is created when the piston of the engine travels downward. Older motorcycles will have what is called a carburetor, or carb for short. The carb holds the gas in a special bowl, and they have a series of small passages for the fuel and air to flow through. When air is sucked through, it creates a sort of vacuum that pulls in the correct amount of fuel with it. They operate on something called the Venturi effect. These systems are very sensitive to changes. Newer motorcycles have fuel injection. This works by sensing how much air is pulled in, and a computer calculates how much fuel should be mixed with it. Whether you have a carb or fuel injection, the fuel and air is now mixed and inside the cylinder of your motorcycle. The cylinder is a large hollow cavity inside the engine. The size of the engine in cubic centimeters, or cc's, is just the volume of the cylinders. It has a large piston that moves up and down at certain times. The cylinder has multiple holes in the top. One has a spark plug in it, and the others are plugged by the intake and exhaust valves. The intake valve is how the air and fuel enter the cylinder. The piston then moves up, compressing the mixture. At just the right moment, the spark plug creates a spark that ignites the mixture, sending the piston right back down again. The piston comes back up, pushing the leftover gases out of the exhaust valve, which is now open. The fumes eventually travel the length of your exhaust and flow into the air we breathe. Nice. This four-step cycle is in a four-stroke engine. There are also two strokes, which do all of this in two motions, only slightly differently. Keep in mind that each cylinder is doing this at its own specific time, which can be the same time as others. The valves open at the correct time due to the camshaft. It spins and has small lobes on it that push on the valves to open them from above. Sometimes there is more than one camshaft. The camshaft is timed with the crankshaft via timing belt. The crankshaft is on the bottom of the engine and is what the pistons are connected to. Whew, that was a lot of information, but how does this all get started? Well, the starter, of course. It can be a kickstart or electric start. Basically, you are just manually turning the engine, you know, making the pistons go up and down to pull fuel and air in the cylinders. That's why you can start your bike just by pushing it sometimes. If you are now wondering how the spark plugs know when to fire, go watch my previous videos after this one of course. All of these explosions happen very quickly and cause a lot of heat. Engines need to be cooled or the heat will cause it to destroy itself. Some engines get by with air cooling. These engines have fins all over them to increase the surface area. The air flows through the fins and takes some of the heat with it. More modern engines usually rely on liquid cooling. This works by allowing a cooling liquid to flow through small channels in the engine. The liquid carries some heat with it as it is then routed outside the engine to a radiator. The radiator has, you guessed it, 
cooling fins to cool the liquid before it goes back in to grab some more heat. One last thing, oil is used as a lubricant in your engine. It keeps the rubber seals in good condition and keeps a nice protective layer between metal parts. It is crucial in keeping wear down on the inside components. FYI, you can mix oil types and grades. It isn't ideal, but it won't kill anything. Thanks for tuning in to my overview of the engine and components. Next time, we will be diving into the world of the clutch and transmission. Did you like it? Did I forget something? Did you learn something new? Was it as good for you as it was for me? Let me know down below. Don't forget to grab some stickers as well, and definitely don't forget to subscribe for more motovlogs and to learn some new things every once in a while.